Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen at this time. Okay. The Capital Fellows programs are a 10 or 11 month program, and you work as paid staff members of the branch of government that you apply to. So judicial fellows work in the judicial branch, executive fellows in the executive branch, uh, Senate and Assembly fellows in the legislative branch of government. This, these fellowships are in direct connection of the state of California through each of the three branches of government. It is a dynamic program in the sense that you are very involved in the highest levels of state government. A few fast facts. Uh, we do pay a monthly salary of $3,253 per month. That is the gross amount. The net amount is different as there are taxes um, that are taken out. You receive six units of graduate credit from Sacramento State. Depending on the program, that would be in public policy, um, or sorry, public administration, and that's for the judicial and executive programs or through political science for the assembly and the Senate programs. We offer um, full benefits, health, vision, and dental, student loan deferrals, and in the Sacramento area for Sacramento light rail and regional transit, free bus and light rail passes. Um, our minimum qualifications are few. You must have your bachelor's degree in any major um, by at the time you become a fellow. So if you are a senior in college right now and you would be graduating in spring of 2023, you would be eligible should a degree be conferred in spring or summer of 2023. You can see the GPA specifications right there as well. You need to be 20 years of age or older by September 1st of the fellowship year. So in this case, it would be you need to be 20 years old by September 1st, 2023. And uh, non-US citizens must provide um, proof of appropriate immigration status and status to work in the United States. The Fellows Program is a nationally recognized program. Fellows begin the year with an extensive orientation specific to their branch of government and where they will be spending their 10 or 11 months of service. And then you also experience a academic seminar. So fellows attend regular academic seminar we do a lot of programming in each of the um, fellows programs really focused on professional development, policy, learning more about current issues within the branch of government and different trends that public service is going about. So for example, in the uh, judicial branch right now, there is a focus on um, technology in the courts. So that is something that we talk about in academic seminar and during our field seminars. And this trend carries on through each of the four fellowship programs. All fellows are placed in Sacramento with the exception of the judicial fellows who, has the, who have the opportunity to serve statewide. So our program is really open to anyone and everyone who meets our minimum qualifications. Recent graduates, graduates, post-grad, mid-career, um, applicants who are Republican, Democrat, um, we welcome you all. So as long as you meet the minimum qualifications, we would invite you to apply. Here's a little bit about our timeline. Uh, we are pleased to announce that applications are now open for the upcoming fellowship year. Applications can be found on our website. It's an online portal, csus.edu slash capital fellows. Capital fellows is spelled with an A, not an O. 
Um, you have until February 6, 2023 at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so California time. Your applications are due. In late April, early May, we conduct program interviews. In May, applicants are notified of their acceptance status. In September, the Judicial Fellows kick off their fellowship year with orientation in Sacramento. And in October, the Executive Assembly and Senate Fellows kick off their fellowship years also with orientation in Sacramento. I'm gonna flip it to Amber, who is the Director of the Assembly Fellowship Program for a little bit more detail there. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, so my name is Amber Carla Talgado, and I'm the director of the Assembly Fellowship Program. It is one of the four Capital Fellows programs um, in the Assembly. As you can probably tell by the name, we place directly with an Assembly member. So um, there are 80 Assembly members in the state of California, and they each represent a district that is a geographic area in California. And so you have the opportunity to um, and to interview with one of those 80 members and then be placed in one of those member offices. Uh, we do select uh, 18 fellows each year. Uh, we also have a very competitive application process. We get several hundred applicants per year and then of those we're able to pick um, 18. Uh, those 18 will, like all the capital fellows, go through a six week orientation program that is tailored specifically for the assembly. So you will meet leadership in the assembly, um, all of the different uh, committee consultants that run the various policy committees that exist in the assembly. So you'll meet with you know, the chief of staff of the speaker, you'll meet with consultants for the health committee, for example, the higher education committee. And you really spend six weeks getting a, an idea of how the legislative process works in the assembly, how a bill becomes a law and what you as a staff person, as a fellow would need to do to move your legislation forward. Um, we also do have a, an academic component. So you do participate in weekly academic seminars. Uh, those are Friday afternoons and they are a requirement of the fellowship. So every uh, Friday you go to the Capitol in the morning and do your work. And then in the afternoon you are in academic seminar with your cohort. And it's a, it's a really great opportunity to discuss policy, you know, a little bit further removed and a chance to kind of uh, for fellows to talk about their own political ideologies and philosophies and to, to see how those compare to their, their fellow fellows. Uh, we also do have weekly brown bag lunches with members of the assembly. So each fellow that is placed with an assembly member will then host a lunch with their assembly member and the 18 fellows. And um, we do that Wednesday afternoons. We do it in the, in the Capitol in, in a very beautiful historic room. And it's a chance for you to meet with assembly members directly to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and we do also have a lot of professional networking and, and hands-on learning. There's um, your fellowship, you're, you're trained throughout the year, so you, you're given a mentor in, in your placement office, and that mentor guides you through your fellowship year, but then we also continue to have educational um, uh, meetings and workshops for the fellows. Um, and you'll see at the bottom we are on Twitter, so do please follow us. Um, we try to update it regularly with events that the, some of the fellows participate in. And if that's my last slide, I'll turn it over to the next speaker. Uh, but I will be here for the remainder of the meeting. If anyone has any um, general questions or assembly specific questions, please uh, put it in the chat or ask me at the end. Thanks so much. Thanks, Amber. Uh, Jamie, we will turn to you and the California Senate Fellows. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, thank you, Amber, as well, and Megan. Um, very similar to that of the Assembly Fellowship in that we are also a part of the legislative branch uh, of the Capital Fellowship programs. Um, there are 18 fellows as well that are accepted into what is a very competitive process. Um, we you know, start out during what is a six to seven week orientation that begins mid-October and runs through early December. Within that time frame, we really push hard at trying to sort of pour into the fellowship class uh, and give them a sense of the culture and the institution, the rules, um, introduce them to all of the different individuals that make up the institution itself. So I sort of boiled it down to uh, process, procedure, policy, people, and press. And we try to really truly pour into you throughout that process and really give you the confidence to walk into your placement, which begins in early December after a very competitive interview process that lasts, lasts for about seven days, where you interview with all of the offices that you're interested in. 
Um, and in and of itself, that's a unique experience where you know you will have a great opportunity for a placement, but also you will meet uh, and network with other offices, get to know other chief of staffs and ledge directors, um, you know, committee assistants, uh, committee secretaries, committee, um, you know, our office assistants, whatnot. And so you really get this unique opportunity to sort of be dropped into this space where we open doors for you to have access and to interact and to engage with the body itself and the people who make up this in the, the, the institution. And so you'll learn how the, those op offices operate, how the hierarchy of those op offices exist and what the infrastructure is like and how your year could go. And so you'll assess that experience and rank that experience. And my job is to match you up with a, a, um, a member office that sort of you align with and that you'll get an opportunity to, that will be your um, your placement, your, your, your essentially how you'll get started in the legislature for the year. Um, we go from orientation to placement, where in which you go from act, you know, basic discovery to active participation in the, in the complete legislative process. You are treated as a legislative aide um, and you fulfill a critical function uh, for uh, necessary staffing in the legislature. And so you'll be called upon to do just about everything a ledge aid will be required to do. Um, and that will uh, be your job. You'll live by the legislative calendar uh, for those 11 months. And, and then um, if you're interested through, at the end of your appointment as a fellow, you'll have an opportunity to stay on board within the Senate uh, and look for a position during what we call the interim uh, study uh, break or recess, and that will be in the fall. Um, being a fellow in the Senate, uh, as it would be in any of these programs, you are part of um, a rich tradition. Uh, you are part of a critical staffing element of that branch government, and the Senate is no exception. We have 40 members, uh, so, so half the size of the Assembly. Um, you also would have the opportunity to apply uh, an interview in committee offices within the Senate um, and uh, sort of leave it there for now. Um, oh, there is the orientation piece as well, which uh, in the fall we get together two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, three hours uh, per uh, seminar. Uh, so six hours a week. And then in the spring, um, we get together on Fridays from 1.30 to 4. You will have uh, research. Uh, writings, uh, capstone project, and presentations that you do throughout that process, all of which is designed to reinforce um, all of the learning that you do that's experiential and sort of give you that the strength, uh, the knowledge, the wisdom as you go through that process of doing the research uh, and meeting with folks along the way. That would be committee consultants, that would be stakeholders, that would be member offices, authors, um, and you know, folks within the institution to better understand how bills are formulated and then you're going to learn hands-on and be supported by a mentor in your placement office throughout the year as well as myself um, to make sure that you get what you need to be successful throughout the year. Thank you. Thanks Jamie. Uh, judicial Fellows are next so I will share a little bit more about the Judicial Fellowship Program. Judicial Fellows there are 10 per cohort and as mentioned in a previous slide, Judicial Fellows serve statewide. We have a fellow as far north um, as Chico this year at the Butte County Superior Court, and as far south as Santa Ana at the Orange County Superior Court. We have everything in between, Bay Area, Valley, Sacramento area, LA Basin, we've got it all. Judicial Fellows work at uh, very specifically on the mission of access to justice for all Californians. That's the mission of the judicial branch and judicial fellows are deeply involved with advancing that mission. Judicial fellows do not work in the courtroom. Judicial fellows work in the executive offices of superior courts on the mission of access to justice doing research, um, policy research, program implementation, um, cost-benefit analysis. They work on um, creating programs or community portals for um, any sort of way to ease the or bridge that gap between the community that they're serving and the court. 
it's, it's making sure that people can pay a traffic ticket easier, if it's creating an online portal for them, if it is creating a video for a self-help center on how to file a domestic violence restraining order. There are a number of ways that judicial fellows can be involved and really make an impact on a community in the 10 months that they serve as a judicial fellow. Every judicial fellow completes a year-long fellowship project that addresses a real-world issue in their court. So this is kind of, uh, this is something that they do. There's a deliverable, something that would normally not get done if the fellow was not there to implement it. So we have had fellows um, create uh, videos and animation for self-help centers on how to get a divorce, how to file a domestic uh, violence restraining order. We have had fellows um, do like a, I guess you'd call it kind of a one-stop shop trial where they worked with probation to um, pilot a program of getting uh, probationers to report to a certain area of the court and kind of get all of their information in one location, like a little pop-up shop. We've had fellows work on HR issues and employee satisfaction surveys. We have fellows who have worked on um, court technology, creating chatbots for self-help centers. So if somebody is unable to come to the court, they can message the court and receive information back as to how they may um, navigate their way through a case. The thing to remember about the Judicial Fellows is that it's really a, an excellent way to kind of be connected to both um, policy, um, state government, public service, and the courts. So we have fellows that go on to do a variety of different things. We have a lot of fellows who stay in service in the branch. We have fellow, former fellows who are now court executive officers, so CEOs of courts. We have fellows who are principal analysts at courts. We have fellows who work at the Judicial Council. Um, that's one main avenue. We have fellows that go on and work for different branches of government in the legislature and the executive branch. We have fellows that go work for for nonprofits. Uh, we have fellows who go at community organizing groups. Fellows go to get advanced degrees in public administration. And then we do have uh, every year one or two fellows who apply to law school. I would stress very strongly that the Capital Fellows programs are not a gap year program. It is a very rigorous, demanding um, curriculum. And it is um, hard, but fun and rewarding work. Judicial fellows participate in monthly academic seminars, and we also do field seminars. We've just begun traveling again after the pandemic. So we do visit different courts around the state and learn more about their programming. And we also have our speaker series as well. And uh, as with the assembly, we are on social media. so. I'd encourage you to follow all Capital Fellows on social media and learn more about the individual programs and fellowship experiences throughout the year. Um, Brian, are you here for exec? Sure am. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Aguilar and I'm the director of the Executive Fellows Program. So the Executive Fellowship Program um, offers many of the same opportunities and resources that the other programs do as well. Um, we have 18 fellows that are selected yearly um, and they come to Sacramento and are placed in offices throughout the executive branch and the administration. So that means everything under the aegis of the governor, including the governor's office. So this would include departments, agencies, boards, commissions, authorities, and more. Um, in addition to that, fellows are sometimes placed at state constitutional offices, which include offices like the Department of Justice, under the Attorney General, the Secretary of State, and other offices as well. Uh, so executive fellows function as full-time professional staff in these offices under the direction and leadership of a mentor and mentor team. Um, again, this is uh, varies broadly across uh, many different agencies and offices. This includes the Department of Finance, the California Natural Resources Agency, uh, Secretary of State, uh, the Office of Emergency Services, and beyond. 
Um, and within this uh, realm, fellows are, are exposed to what it takes to run a state, what it takes to be able to deliver upon the services to protect uh, the rights and more um, for all Californians um, and run an organization that consists of roughly 240,000 state workers. Uh, so fellows can expect their placement to offer a strong variety of work opportunities and experiences, which include budgeting. So how do we pay for all of this? Um, legislation, actually crafting, researching, developing, and working with this legislature to enact legislation that helps to deliver upon our promises to the state. Uh, communications, broadly communicating to the world, not just the state, not just the community, but the world, uh, what we're providing and what our state is up to. Uh, organizational leadership and administration. So what does it take to run organizations as small as two dozen to as large as 5,000 people? Um, and organizational leadership, how does one lead an organization and an agency and a department, um, as well as a substantive project management experience. So what does it take to be able to deliver upon things like delivering vaccinations to the state, um, to helping the our most um, uh, vulnerable communities to prepare for disasters? Um, what does it take for us to be able to expand voter outreach? Um, and uh, research as well. So a lot of fellows, almost every single fellow in the executive branch will engage in research in some way, shape or form that is actionable. This is research that is gonna go into and actually feed and support these activities. Um, and then subject matter expertise, um, because you'll be working in a specific department or agency or under the guidance of a specialist um, in, the, in the governor's office who's working on a particular policy area, you will become versed in that particular policy area in ways that you didn't, you, you really couldn't prepare for and didn't even know. Um, so our fellows, um, again, are placed throughout these different offices and they vary in size and shape, but by and large, we execute this message, our, our, our mission in the executive fellowship program by providing executive fellows with high level participation in governance, um, by cultivating an understanding and application of the theories and concepts that are pertinent to public administration and governance. And this happens through our seminar, similar to the other programs as well. Um, and developing individualized leadership abilities, capacities, and skill sets through individual coaching, applied opportunities, professional workshops, and comprehensive evaluation. So we do a lot of leadership development in our program, uh, focusing on your own leadership philosophy, on what it takes to lead and what is most comfortable for you developing your own uh, uh, way in which you would like to lead by exposure to these offices and these styles. But at the end of the day, helping you to develop a, a professional community that you will belong to, which includes the three other fellowship programs, developing your first professional networking opportunities, um, as well as developing relationships that can last you a lifetime for sure. And executive fellows post fellowship program have gone on to work at not only within state government at all three branches, but at multiple levels as well, the locals, uh, state and at the federal levels, and many have gone on to the nonprofit and for-profit worlds for sure. Um, but all of it towards, um, you know, remaining skilled, ethical, and purposeful leaders who are committed to making a difference in the world no matter where they happen to be. Um, so um, our, our fellows um, have a wide variety of offices to be able to participate in, um, but we are really focused on uh, what it takes to implement all the great ideas we happen to have in our state. Great, thank you, Brian. And so that concludes our formal presentation. A reminder of the application deadline, February 6, 2023, by 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our applications and other informations are available on our website, csus.edu slash capitalfellows. And then we also have our social media um, resources as well. So I'll go ahead and stop the share and open it up for questions, should there be any from the audience. Okay, uh, Sarah, I see your hand first. Hello. Uh, I'm Sarah Deem. Um, I'm actually a Sac State alumni, and I actually just recently graduated uh, Lincoln Law School. Regarding the Judicial Fellowship uh, Program, are fellows expected to relocate to the court that they're assigned to, or is it going to be done more remotely here in Sacramento? And that's a great question. Um, fellows are required to relocate to the court they are assigned. Um, 
we do not do it randomly. If selected to interview, then an uh, applicant is provided a placement information booklet that details all of the placements, their locations, the type of work that's available. It's all very, um, it's a huge variety of opportunities that are um, available in the judicial branch. And the committee talks through the placement ranking sheet submitted by the applicant during the interview. We learn a little bit about where you're interested in serving and why. And then placements and um, offers are made simultaneously. So that's a little bit different than the other programs. So judicial would make an offer saying, congratulations, applicant X. Uh, we're happy to admit you to the Judicial Fellowship class of 23-24. Your placement is in San Francisco. And an applicant either accepts or rejects the entire package. Um, however, if an applicant does come in to an interview and says, you know, I'm, I would really love to serve in the LA area because I own a home or that's where my family is or, you know, there's some sort of connection, and that's certainly something that's discussed with the committee. Judicial fellows are in placement in person, as are the Assembly and the Senate. And uh, Brian, exec? I'm sorry, you were saying? Oh, um, remote work for exec. Yes, um, most offices these days are hybrid, so there are telework options available in person and remote. Um, Aaron, and I see you next. Yes, I thank you. Um, my question is, what is the times for each of the uh, locations that someone will be placed in? What time they clock in, what time they clock out, is there overtime? Um, and for Director Aguilar, um, would that also include the Department of Education or something of the Education Committee? So I'd say across all four programs, um, minimally, you would be expected to report to them during regular work hours, which is eight to five for every uh, placement, with the exception, again, of when you happen to be in seminar. So for the Assembly, Senate, and Exec branch, that is three hours on a Friday, sometimes in the morning or afternoon. So minimally 37 hours, but uh, understand that the nature of the beast when it comes to these offices, all of them, is that um, there are times when you will have to work past five or maybe earlier than eight. There are some weekends included as well because the operations and work of the government uh, at these levels, um, you are modeling those uh, who are in charge and responsible for these. So those times will definitely extend. Um, and it depends on the organization and the placement for the fellowship for sure for the uh, legislative programs it's going to depend heavily upon the calendar what time of year it is uh, when it comes to committee deadlines uh, legislative deadlines etc um, but in, uh, in addition to that um, for the executive branch it depends on with whom you happen to work we had fellows who had to staff um, COVID vaccination sites and were part of the organization of testing sites as well so you can imagine a lot of that took place on weekends um, and so there are a lot, it, it varies per office for sure, but those can be, those are, those are almost expected of it for sure. Now within the executive fellowship program, um, occasionally we do get placements in the educational world as well. Um, we don't know which offices are going to apply to be a potential placement site until the start of the actual program year. So for instance, our fellows are going to be starting next Wednesday, October 12th. Um, that is when we will know exactly which office they happen to be. But it is, we endeavor to definitely take a broad survey of all the different placements and policy opportunities that happen to be out there. Um, so we try to keep that in focus as well and make sure we have a lot of different variety of areas for fellows to be a part of. Thank you. Okay, Alex, I see your hand and we're trying to respond to people in the chat as well. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I did want to ask, is there a limit on how many times people can apply for the Capital Fellows Program? Say one, they applied last year, are they ineligible to apply again or to continue to apply? Uh, Jamie, you wanna take that one? Please feel free uh, to reapply if, if, you, need, if you so choose, um, there is no limit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question in the chat that I think would be a good one for discussion. Um, what kind of candidates are you looking for? What kind of degrees uh, makes one qualified for the position? So that, that's an easy one. It's your bachelor's degree. Um, any 
positions available for data science, stats, business, and economics. Um, so I can take real quickly the last one. Um, data is huge right now in the judicial branch. In fact, this year we have a position in Orange County where the fellow is assigned exclusively to the data unit of the court, analyzing all the different programs, functions, structures. Um, we call it uh, data informed decision making. So yes, there is space for data. Um, Amber, did you want to take the first part of the question? What kind of candidates are you looking for and anything related to data as well? Sure. Um, I would say, um, just to start off, there is, there's no degree that makes someone qualified or not qualified. We're looking for people that are well-rounded and that can work on any issue area that affects the state of California, right? So we do need people that are passionate about education. We need people that understand environmental policy. We need people that understand data. We need people that uh, are interested in the judicial process. So, I mean, it's really... There, there's so much work to do in, in managing the state that any interest that any background you have um, is valuable. I would say we do get quite a few political science majors. So then when we do have a science major or someone with a unique background, that's actually sought after because you have a, an expertise that is not common uh, particularly in the legislature. Um, but I would say, what are we looking for? We're looking for people that are passionate about public policy and about the state of California and that want to serve. I mean, this is a this is a public service job where you work for the people of the state of California. And so we're looking for people that are driven to make life better for the citizens of California in whatever way that they, that they feel that they can. So um, really we're looking for passion, we're looking for dedication to service. And I think, you know, a, 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 and that needs to be demonstrated in your, in your application. I think it's very important if, if you say that you're passionate about an issue area, to have experience working in that issue area, or to have volunteered for a nonprofit that works in that, or to be part of the club on your campus that deals with that issue. So it's, it's important to know what you want to bring to the fellowship and also to have experience that can back up uh, what you're claiming to be passionate about. And I'll open it up to the other. And Jamie or Brian, would you like to add anything on that? Um, I can add just for the executive branch, um, repeating much of what was already stated, but we, uh, every almost every single placement we have in our, in our fellowship program will employ your skill sets um, in data, stats, business, econ. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities in that regard for sure. Um, but to, to jump on Amber's point too, a lot of it is around, we're trying to find fellows that you don't have to have an expertise in government. No one coming to the fellowship program has the expertise available to be able to do this right now. What we're looking for are folks who can learn quickly and have a passion for taking responsibility for making things different. Um, and once that happens, once you're here, we run you through all those. We have great mentors who know that, who understand that you're coming to this fresh out of the world and, and with, with your passions and interests and so forth. And we'll teach you the mechanics of our offices and the, the branches for sure. But it's about, we're looking for self-determined, self-motivated individuals who are willing to learn anything to try and make a difference. And at the same time, apply your own skill sets that you have and learn how those, those apply to the immediate uh, uh, office you happen to be in, but then at the same time, develop new ones and, and create new relationships with folks. So um, again, we don't want to be, we don't want you to, to think that you have to have an expertise in these areas. We've had majors from across the board, the humanities, the sciences, um, and have been different offices. And so it's just about your desire to have an open mind about new opportunities. Um, and your willingness to serve and, and work hard. I'll just quickly add uh, very much, very thorough responses from the other directors, so I won't go too deeply, but I will also just add that uh, we're looking for folks who are passionate about public service, who are uh, adaptable, can write, um, are creative, demonstrate good decision making, and have good self awareness. And if that plays out in your academic career and, you know, throughout your academic career, you can demonstrate that whatever your major was, then we want you. Okay, here's a good question for Amber and Jamie uh, from Kara. If I have already interned for a senator, would I get placed in a position that aligns with my current skill set, or would there be opportunity to expand my knowledge? 
Yeah, stretch opportunities are, are always welcome. You've already interned in a member office, in a senator's office. Um, there's a slight uh, rule requirement associated with that. You would not not be able to be placed in that member office because you've already had the internship experience there. So we would um, allow you to move on uh, and seek other opportunities. And going through the interview process is really um, enlightening. I would say you'll get to know how each office operates, not just how the member operates and what you might align with with that member, but with what the office culture it, uh, it provides and what the, the office infrastructure looks like. And so, you know, <clears throat> what you align with politically, what you align with from a, um, a work culture standpoint, uh, how you want to be supported and how you want to support a team, you'll learn a little bit about how each office operates when you go through the interview process for placement, which happens in mid-November after you're in the middle of your orientation. So by then you sort of have a lot more information, a lot more information about the body, a lot more information about the members. You're doing deep, deep dives and research on some of the policies that each member is <clears throat> authoring uh, or high or, you know, I would say uh, legislation that might be, you know, key legislation over the last year or two for a member. Um, and so you'll have a lot more knowledge about where you might want to be placed. But I think the best way to dis discern uh, what feels right as far as a placement is going through the interview process, because you'll be surprised it goes beyond the member and, and into the entire staff. And so uh, with that included with that would be that you'd have the ability to challenge yourself and stretch uh, your skills out in a, in a unique and another unique environment beyond the one that you've already had the opportunity in. Amber, any, anything that you'd like to add to that? I mean, yeah, just to, to echo Jamie, um, we have a lot of applicants that have interned with an assembly member or a senator or a local elected official. And that, that in no way is going to pigeonhole you with that office. I mean, that, that experience is valuable. And I think it speaks to the work you'll be doing when you're in the legislature. But um, when you come in, you come in with a clean slate and you would interview with you know, anywhere between 15 and 20 assembly members in, in the case of the assembly. And then you would be placed according to their needs and to your uh, interests and your preferences. There's a, a matching process and ultimately the director places you. But in this last class, I would say easily half of the fellows had previously had experience with an elected official and none of them were placed with that elected official again. So, you know, this is a, it's a brand new process. Um, so we have a technical question about when will we know the exact dates for interviews? So if selected for an interview, you would receive an official um, communication from the respective fellowship program or programs, depending. It is possible to apply to multiple fellowship programs. It is also possible that you would be in, um, invited to interview with multiple fellowship programs, and that is all okay. Um, and so when that official communication comes out, um, you would be invited to select your interview date and time through our online system. Typically, they take place um, the last few weeks of April and first few weeks of May, but dates do vary, exact dates do vary from year to year, so that is an approximate timeline. Aaron. Yes, um, uh, Director Thoral, questions for you. Uh, in the past, have judicial fellows been placed in the Judicial Council in San Francisco or any San Francisco placement? Yes, uh, judicial fellows are um, placed at the Judicial Council. We have um, our placements vary from year to year, but uh, this year we have a fellow at the Judicial Council Office of Governmental Affairs, but that office is located here in Sacramento. Last year, we had a fellow placed at the Judicial Council um, Criminal Justice Services Division, and that office is located in San Francisco. Um, let's see, uh, Amber and Jamie, another question for you, for the Assembly and Senate Fellowship, would we mostly be working in the Capitol or will we move around regularly? The under construction capital. So Amber, you wanna go first on that? Yeah, so that's the million dollar question. So for those of you that don't know, um, the Capitol in Sacramento is a beautiful old historic building that um, was built in the 1800s. And then there's a new part of the building that was built in the 50s that 
house all of um, legislative staff and most of the assembly members. Um, that new part of the building is now um, being redone. So uh, the historic side of the Capitol is still there. Floor session is held there. The fellows actually have their brown bag lunches in the historic side. But the new site, which is called the, the new site is called the Annex. And I say new, it built in the 50s new. Uh, that is being redone. So there is another building that we are calling the swing space that is just two blocks from the Capitol. And it is a very large, uh, very modern new office building. And that's where both the assembly and the Senate are housed. And so um, all of the member offices for both the Senate and the assembly are in the swing space. Um, committee hearings are being held there. There are large conference rooms there. There's a cafeteria there. It's basically the new capital, and we will be there for the. We will all be there for the next five years. Um, in terms of, I don't think that was actually the question. I think the question is, are we in the capital there? Do we actually move around? Um, when you're working in the legislature, you're pretty much in the legislature for the bulk of of your work. Um, hearings are held in the same building. Most of your meetings, people come to you. You don't necessarily go to them. Um, there is some opportunity to travel. Uh, some fellows go to district to the district and do district events, um, or they'll take, you know, um, there was just a, a tour that a bunch of assembly fellows went on of, of ports, and so they were visited the ports in Southern California, Northern California. Uh, sometimes there'll be ag tours that, that fellows take, and they'll visit, you know, different um, farms and things like that. Um, so there are opportunities to do briefings and to do uh, to do travel, but it's not. I would. Say it's not a day to day activity. Day to day, you're in in the swing space in the Capitol, taking meetings, going to hearings, and then you do travel as needed or as um, suggested by your member. Jamie, anything that you would like to add to that? No, that I mean, it would be the same exactly for the Senate. So okay. well said. Um, we have a question about seminars um, for the fellowship programs. Um, seminars are held in the downtown core area. Um, judicial fellowship seminars right now are currently being held. I should say our academic seminar is being held um, remotely. And so fellows participate through that via Zoom. Our field seminars are in person. So whenever we meet for programming, that is together. Um, okay. Another question from Alex. Yes, thank you. I did want to ask, how has the Capital Fellows Program changed over time? Has it always been 18 placements in the respect of fellowships and 10 for judicial. In the future, will there be more placements? How has it changed per year? So the Capital Fellows programs, I would call them very steady and stable in terms of both our numbers and our connections with our branch partners. So nothing really changes. Um, there have been some growth in our programs. Um, judicial has grown from five to 10 fellows um, and executive grew from 10 to 18 fellows at different points during our history. But yes, a very, very stable environment. We know that we are hiring 64 fellows for the upcoming fellowship year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, a question about fellows being in person at the Capitol, or are they working in remote conditions? Um, Amber and Jamie? Um, yeah, so during during certain periods of COVID, uh, some assembly staff were, were hybrid and were remote, and I'm seeing that there's a comment that some interns were remote, and that's probably been true for the past couple of years. Um, as of right now, the assembly is back fully in person. And so uh, fellows are expected to report to the office on a daily basis. There may be some internship programs that are still virtual. Um, the assembly fellowship is not. The Senate fellowship is, is uh, in person. The expectation will be that you'll be in person during the full six week orientation and then placed in a member office and available. Um, there may be times when uh, it's possible based on the office to, let's say, work from home on a specific day, that will all be negotiated um, and worked out per the office. But for the most part, I wouldn't say close to 100% um, in-person placement. And, and to add on that, oh, quit. Sorry, Brian, go ahead. Oh, and for the executive branch, um, we are requiring fellows going forward to be in Sacramento. 
Um, but I'd say 95% of the offices are working in a hybrid uh, work environment. So two days in the office, three days at home, three days in the office, two days at home. And it depends on the workload as well. Some offices have more uh, working from home than working in the office. Others have uh, much more, depending upon the needs and what their <laughs> office may happen to be in person. But we will be having seminar in person um, in the at the downtown center for Sacramento. And um, I would wrap it up with judicial saying that um, judicial fellows are serving in person. The courts uh, stayed open through the pandemic and court employees um, are, um, they work through emergencies. And so that includes, as we just recently found out, pandemics. And so the judicial fellows mm -hmm. do serve in person. There may be some hybrid schedules as needed, but expect for that full-blown experience. Aaron. Yeah, this question is just for Director Taylor. Um, Director Taylor, if you get placed with a senator, um, is that the entire full year or do they do you get to pick do they pick another senator for you to take the other half? How does that work? No, well, so typically in the Senate, uh, members and committees may apply for a fellow in the last year or so. We have not had any fellows work in a committee, but we do have a history of fellows working in committee. So that should, certainly could be an option depending upon uh, the interest and the interview process. But for the most part, but always you'll be placed in that office throughout the year. Um, working in a member office, you may be able to work on a committee bill that the maybe that the member is chairing um, a committee for right and so you you might have some crossover experiences but but you will be placed where you are for the entire 11 months or thank between you. December and and September thank you uh same thing for you um director amber is that the same for the assembly as well yes yeah the placements are for the entire membership so you'll be in one office for the entire time Thank you both. And we have a question in the chat about housing. And uh, the short answer is that, unfortunately, we do not provide housing for fellows serving in the Sacramento area or other areas of the state. Okay. Alex. Similar to the housing question, are fellows provided a work computer or a work phone, or are we expected to provide our own technology? What are the other hidden costs? Sure. Um, judicial fellows are provided a, um, every and every fellow is provided a workstation. So that's like a, a work, whether it's a work laptop or a work desktop, that's all provided by your placement. Uh, judicial fellows do are not provided a work cell phone and to my knowledge all of my fellows use their personal cell phone um, however um, it's not for any sort of extraneous use um, they will call me for a check-in but they could really call me from any phone that they so choose so it's not a requirement to have a cell phone in any of the fellowship programs um, if you need a personal laptop for academic seminar, then we, um, all four Capital Fellows programs, send out a technology needs assessment form prior to starting the fellowship, where we can kind of gauge the sort of resources that you need. For example, um, my fellow who's in Orange County working on data, she needs an extra monitor based on her work and her workstation. And so that is something that we would provide for her. Um, we had another fellow who needed a laptop. And so we were able to arrange for that through Sacramento State's uh, laptop lending program. And so a fellow can have a laptop lent to them for the duration of the fellowship program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any additional questions or comments from potential applicants? Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to join us today and learn more about the Capital Fellows programs. We appreciate you being here. 
please remember to check out our website, csus.edu slash capital fellows for the application and all of the information that we went over today. If you have any questions, please reach out. All of the directors love talking to applicants. So our contact information can be found on our website and you're welcome to email us at any time. Thank you.